Uh, this is Oboya. I um, would like to take this opportunity to share our recent project, comparative explanation for recommendations. So I guess it's well known that explanation or recommendation system could help users make more informed decisions and build up their trust in the recommendation systems. Uh, many existing solutions trying to utilize the user reviews to provide textual-based explanation. Uh, let's use the following hotel uh, recommendation example. So, so like many systems like this TripAdvisor or Uber or Amazon that provide the forms to allow you to give rating, meanwhile writes a textual-based review and this review, of course, will inherently have a strong correlation with this rating. So, so, so this piece of text uh, inherently addresses that why this rating is given. That's why many existing uh, solutions trying to uh, either extract text, terms, or graph, or even use uh, natural language generation techniques to, to synthesize this kind of review as the explanation for, for, the, for the recommendation. Uh, however, we feel this is not perfect uh, because the recommendation is eventually a ranking process. So, so the user basically based on a rank a ranked list of items to choose which fits their best. Therefore, the corresponding explanation should also help the user compare the item. This, this corresponding explanation should also illustrate this kind of ranking. Uh, we, we call this the comparative explanation. Let's use this right side hotel recommendation as an example. So there are three hotels recommended in descending order. If we just read through this short explanation, uh, I believe most users could feel like why they are recommended in this ranking. Uh, they can see that why hotel A is better than the others, why C is somehow probably not that good. Uh, but if we replace the explanation hotel C with this uh, one in this dashed yellow box, can the user still get the same conclusion? Then probably not, because from this explanation, seems like everything is good. The hotel is good, the pool is good, like everything is good, then why this hotel is not recommended as high as others? Uh, the user may get confused. Should they continue to scroll further or should, should they really trust this ranking? As you can see, if the explanation is not comparative, they may not help or even hurt the recommendation system. Unfortunately, many existing solutions cannot really address this issue uh, because for many of them, the explanation are generated independently. That means when I want to explain the hotel A, I will only consider everything about the hotel A without consider the, the, their counterpart items. And moreover, many of this natural language based explanation uh, relies on some somehow the flawed natural language techniques like likelihood training, like likelihood training and greedy decoding. Somehow these kind of techniques are known to be flawed with generic contents. Uh, for, for example, like the explanation here, the hotel is good. In a hotel review, this kind of explanation basically provides not, nothing because everything, everybody the hotel and the good is not a very descriptive word. So when you provide explanation like that, user cannot really compare it to differentiate with other, other items. Uh, therefore, uh, so in, in this project, we're trying to tackle this comparative explanation generation problems. So our solution is trying to focus on the how, how one item is compared with another item. We're using a shared set of items as references. This reference are usually the, uh, the this items, other items that the user have reviewed before. Uh, still, let's use the right side hotel recommendation as an example. So there are three reviews in Blue Box ACD which are reviewed by this user before. So whenever we want to recommend a new item, we can compare this item with this existing reviews. Uh, so we pair this, uh, for example, this newly recommended hotel B, we can compare it with all these existing, uh, existing item hotels to see that how the hotel B is ranked in, re in relations to, to the other, other, other reviewed items. And through this comparison, uh, the 
the ranking or the comparison between the recommended items could emerge. For example, here B is better than C, D, and E is worse than C, D. So somehow in the end, we will get the, when we have the final explanation, when the user reads them, they can feel that, okay, B is, B is better than E through this, through this shared set of references. Um, so let's let's formulate our problem. So we start with we have a user U and an item C. And for the U, we'll have a set of things we call the user profile, which are basically the those references I mentioned before, the reviews this uh, user have given before and the, with their corresponding rating. So there are two of this, the, the, the X, which is the explanation, and R, which is the ratings. Similarly, we'll also have the item review, uh, but the opposite, the item review will be uh, all the review given by different user about these items. But here we'll only use the review content. Uh, we'll not use the rating. Uh, this is because we believe the only the rating given by a same user are comparable. If the rating are given by different user, uh, they may mean different things for different users. So the value, the number are not directly comparable. So we will not consider using uh, items uh, rating. Then with here, we'll, our solution does not want to propose another uh, recommendation algorithm. We we'll assume there is a given uh, recommender, which anyone, any working algorithm that people uses. The only requirement is this recommender will predict a rating or a ranking scores. So here, as this recommender takes this user U and the item C, they will predict that this ranking score for, for this pair. Then our, 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 our explainable, explainable solution is trying to condition on all this provided information, trying to predict a probability of the, of the explanations X. So our, explain, our, our explanation model will take this user profile and the ranking score and the item profile, trying to predict a uh, condition on them, what's the best uh, possible explanation is. Uh, so we also assume our explanation procedure as a two-step process, uh, extraction and the refining. So in the extraction, we will have an extraction probability, uh, which uh, is based on the user profile and the ranking score. We're trying to find a best fit uh, explanate review from the given item profile, from the existing profile. So you can think about somehow like we're trying to refer what kind of things this item really have, some of the some of the truth about this item. Then we have a refining step, which trying to somehow really express, really describe about those uh, extracted aspects in, in the writing style or in the uh, opinion of this target user. So we'll have a refining probability. So the final uh, explanation probability is basically the marginal probability against all possible uh, uh, extracted review from this item. So based on this problem, you may ask that then where is the comparativeness? Where does the comparison happens? So I want to highlight this uh, condition in this probability. So the predict ranking and the user profile. So if we zoom in into this condition, uh, we'll see this user profile is basically the references I have introduced before. So a bunch of reviewed uh, item with their uh, actual reviews, textual reviews, and the ratings. And the predicted ranking is basically predicted rating or ranking is basically suggests where this newly recommended item should fit uh, in this references. So we can form this pairs of comparison. And this comparison can be represented as simple as the rating difference, delta UI. So basically using the uh, it, it, each reviewed item's rating minus this predicted rating, we know their relative orders. So with those data UI, then we can rewrite this condition into a set of comparison with data UI and the basic explanations. So in another word, 
this kind of probabilities are basically equals to how well the opinions conveyed in this in the explanation character characterize the desired opinion difference with the user's historical con uh, historical content so the user profile now with this problem formulation uh let's uh, zoom into the model so at the right hand side is uh, our actual model structure uh, as you can see we have the extractor and the refiner uh, since we have these two steps let's first start with the extractor so the goal of extractor is trying to select a prototype explanation uh, from from the item profiles uh, as you can see all this item profile only have the explanation so we through the text encoder we we encode them into a candidate text embedding, which we will select from. And for the user profile, we also through the text encoder have the uh, reference. And since the user profile also has rating, we'll format this kind of Delta, U, uh, Delta UI we introduced before as, uh, as, uh, as a comparison. So since the Delta UI basically stands for what's the difference of the recommended item and the, and the uh, reference item. So we will consider using this data UI uh, as a transform direction, trying to transform the references into an intended uh, content representation, basically like the ideal, the perfect representation to fit this comparison with, uh, with the reference. And then how can we extract from this candidate? Since H somehow, represents this perfect representation then we just can just need to calculate the similarity of each candidate against this age the more similar it is the better it will fit the comparison the, therefore we should extract that uh, since these are both text embeddings uh cosine similarity is usually used to calculate similarity so here we we just assume each edge will project a one misses feature distribution uh, which is about the cosine similarity and we'll try to and this is the uh density function of this distribution and we'll simply select the candidate with the largest uh, density and since we have more than one reference so the final extraction probability will cover all all the distribution of these references. And then let's move to the refiner. So the goal of the refiner is to base down the extracted prototype explanation, trying to rewrite it into a better one. So what do I mean better? As we have argued before, so a better explanation should better fit all this comparison against the references. Uh, therefore, if we bring this uh, a refined text back into the extractor, we should see that this should have a higher extraction probability. And this is exactly what the gradient of the, this P extraction, P, P extraction is. Uh, the, the, if we move against the, this gradient direction, we can get a better X hat, which will improve the original value. So therefore we simply take the gradient of this extraction probability and use this as a direction to update our original prototype XC into the X, X, X hat C. And in the end, we'll have a text decoder to try to convert this text embedding into the fi final explanation. So now we have the probability of generating the text. And if we have another uh, reward objective, we can train this model end to end with policy gradient. Uh, so this reporter can be any explanation qualities, uh, quality metrics. So existing work usually use blue, which is an uh, offline metric originally designed for translation, usually ma measures the uh, on-gram precision, in another word, overlap. However, since it's designed for translation, when it's used in explanation, it will, ha will have some problems. It may bounce towards the shorter sentence, and it will favor more generic content. Uh, this is mainly because those words are valued equally, regardless of their importance. For example, the stop words, the, uh, so this kind of precision is not that meaningful. Therefore, in this work, we also uh, propose another uh, re 
objective function IDF rule, which is basically we're using IDF to to balance the word importance and the the original rules overlap. So, for example, this is our 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 our, our final IDF formula. I will only introduce some part of it. For example, the precision part. Here we introduce the IDF to reweight this precision. Basically, for the words which are more important, we'll have higher IDF, then it will dominate the precision. And we also have an IDF brevity penalty. That's because the, the blue is still a precision base. So we will, if if the generator does not generate any a uh, high IDF word, we cannot uh, we cannot really require the model to, we cannot require the object to do anything. Therefore, we introduce this uh, brevity penalty, which will punish uh, the, the sentence with, ab with lower average IDF per word. So now we zoom into the, uh, the, the experiment. Uh, besides our solution turned down IDF blue, we also introduce a variance, which is turned on the original blue. As you can see, for most of the evaluation, uh, our model can, are leading in their own uh, categories, uh, which shows the, the effectiveness of, of our modeling. However, I also want to highlight some part uh, is about the average length and ID for per word. If you compare our performance against the uh, actual human, you, sorry, you, you can see that actually when the model is turned down blue, uh, even though the blue is very high, but actually has a very unnatural sentence length and IDF per word. So that's just to support our argument about the problem in the blue. And that's why we need the IDF blue. When we use IDF blue as the evaluation, you can see we can correctly penalize this uh, unnatural behavior of blue. Uh, besides offline, uh, experimental also did an online user study. So. We're basically trying to provide the explanation of two items and see if the user can really differentiate the ranking based on the explanations. Uh, we evaluate the human's agreement rate with this model predict ranking. Uh, as you can see, our model can indeed improve the agreement rate. However, I want to highlight the, what's the ground truth, which is the original user review, which is much higher. This simply suggests that the original user provided the review indeed are highly comparative and the users through this review can, can see the uh, items ranking. Unfortunately, all this existing solution, including us, still have a huge gap to improve. Uh, so I would like to conclude our work. So this work studied the problem of comparative explanation generation in expandable recommendation. And we developed a neural extract and refine architecture to generate such comparative explanation. So in future, uh, we would like to uh, incorporate our solution with an uh, actual recommendation system. As you can see, we currently just assume a given recommendation algorithm. And that's all for my presentations. Thank you all for being here. Okay, thank you for the great presentation. So any questions? for him. So I would like to ask one question from you. So how do you see your method uh, would be basically transferable to other domains as well? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, so I would believe that my solution will still uh, mainly in the recommendation since I'm focusing on the comparative of the explanation since the recommendation are comparative. So I need to uh, bind to, to the recommendation field. Uh, but I can see my, my uh, work maybe apply to other kinds of explanation. Uh, for example, in this work, we mainly discuss about the textual generation based explanation. Uh, th this should be comparative. But this comparativeness should be also applied to other explanation types. For example, the basic, the, the feature importance based explanation. Basically, you're doing attribution to see like which feature contributes the most to the to the prediction. Um, so there are somehow in this area, many people just uh, uh, select the most important uh, feature 
for that prediction for 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 specific for that prediction alone or without considering all the other or all the other other item this may not be the right explanation for for the ranking because for example a feature a contributes a lot for the current prediction however it also contributes the prediction of many other candidate item basically if you remove this feature everybody just drops and your the original number one ranked item will still be ranked at number one the ranking does not change so for this area we should also consider comparativeness you should not find the most important feature instead you should find which feature contribute most positively to this item and somehow negatively to other ranked lower item to have the most uh, gap which feature contribute most to this gap so this is how i see that uh, my work to, can be expanded to other domains Okay, thanks. Thanks for the reply. So there is one more question in the chat, but I appreciate if you can, you know, elaborate on that question uh, by, you know, answering it in the chat since we are running Hello? out of time. Are you here? Uh, yeah, so, okay, so um, uh, can you elaborate on his question just very quickly? So, yeah, uh, yeah. just do you want to so, add, like, ask your question? Yeah. Yeah, actually my question is, say I see in this paper, the explanation actually is tailored for items in single domain like hotels, so you can compare them. So my question is, what if the recommended items is from maybe a e-commerce website, then maybe the items can be say books and products from different say categories, say then how we can compare the different items yeah yeah I, I think that's definitely that's a very good question i think that will definitely be much more challenging but since at least in this work i focused on using review uh as can this review like explanation so i believe if uh for your e-commerce from multiple category if this item still has reviews i think we can do the same similarly it the problem is just maybe those comparativeness is harder to observe for for a user. For example, when you go to an e-commerce website, if they recommend a movie in front of a hotel, uh, so there still must be some reason. It's just uh, when we display in those texture based review, can the user really tell from this texture based from a movie and a hotel tell the difference? I think that will let be a little bit challenging since they do not have that many common areas to compare, uh, but the method itself should, should stay. Uh, 